Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member for Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm proud to announce that last week the town of Seaforth hosted the 25th anniversary of the Huron Perth Agriculture and Water Festival. This annual festival is a fun-filled event that provides great school students with hands-on learning opportunities about agriculture and water conservation. This year, the event hosted approximately 575 grade four students representing 14 schools from across Huron and Perth. The purpose of the Agricultural and Water Festival is to encourage students to learn more about and understand the importance of agriculture and water. The amazing volunteers not only help students understand the importance of agriculture and water, but also provide them with a foundational knowledge of farming, how farms operate, and how farmers are dedicated stewards of the land. Children who otherwise don't necessarily get the opportunity to interact with farm animals or the agriculture sector are able to expand their knowledge of where their food comes from, as well as what is involved in raising animals and caring for our land. For example, this year's festival featured a wide range of demonstrations, milking, farm tips in terms of safety, and a look at both the pork and poultry production. It is really great to see collaboration that has devoted 25 years of work into providing the children of Huron and Perth counties the education of the land they live on. I wish to thank the Huron Perth Agriculture and Water Festival in Seaforth, and I wish them many for more successful years. Their efforts are so important and valued. Thank you very much. Thank you further uh, members' statements. The member from Windsor to come. Thank you, Speaker. I want to take the unusual step to say something positive about this Liberal government for a change. I'm interested. I'm interested. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with saying thank you when my community will benefit directly from a government announcement. In this case, it was the result of a tough round of bargaining between Unifor and the Ford Motor Company. Unifor wouldn't settle a new contract unless Ford of Canada committed to a new product at the Essex Engine Plant in Windsor. Ford asked the federal and provincial government to prove they valued an Ontario automotive industry. The end result, Speaker, is a partnership with more than a billion dollar investment. Ontario is putting up more than 100 million, so are the feds. I wasn't invited to the announcement, Speaker. I would have liked to have been there. It's in my writing. Actually, I was one of the reporters back in the fall of 1978 when Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau uh, turned the sod for that plant. Windsor, as you know, Speaker, is the cradle of Canada's automotive industry. So I want to put a partisan differences aside for a moment. I want to publicly thank Mr. Duguid, the Minister of Economic Development and Growth, Premier Wynne, the federal government, Ford of Canada, and especially the leadership at Unifor for making this new investment such a critical priority during their bargaining process. As my leader, Andrea Horvath, has said, Ontario water workers deserve a proactive industry-wide strategy from all levels of government that will help protect against future job losses and rebuild a manufacturing base that has been allowed to decline for too many years. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the member from Etobicoke North. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Speaker, I would like to follow in the footsteps of my honourable colleague from Windsor Tecumseh and also like to praise this extraordinary and agile Liberal government, uh, particularly in the great riding of Etobicoke North. I wanted, Speaker, uh, to indicate to you and to uh, my own residents in Etobicoke North $1.7 billion worth of development which is occurring as we speak. Uh, we gave, for example, Speaker, $90 million for a magnificent, uh, beautiful Jewel in the Crown student facility at Humber College. Uh, it's a student centre. I had the chance to tour it, and uh, folks are enjoying it, and it's, uh, it's many, many kind of uh, aspects. Uh, I'll detail that perhaps another time. We have from the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure eight new stops of the Finch LRT. This alone is a $1.2 billion project. Humber College, Highway 27, Westmore, Martin Grove, Albion, Stevenson, Kipling, and Islington. Eight new stops, Speaker, count them. And we have approximately a $400 million facility going up, uh, expanding the Etobicoke General Hospital footprint, uh, quadrupling it 
250,000 square feet, everything from an emergency department, critical care, intensive care, cardiorespiratory, neurodiagnostic, and so much more. So, Speaker, whether we're talking about health care or education or infrastructure or transport, Etobicoke North is on the move. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Nepean, Carleton. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today uh, to, to commemorate uh, the tragedy and the triumph that was Vimy Ridge. On Sunday, Canadians came together uh, to, to celebrate a victory and to remember those who lost their lives and who sacrificed 100 years ago. The Ottawa Catholic School Board, and in particular St. Mark's uh, Public High School, or Catholic High School in my constituency, hung yellow ribbons across the Vimy Memorial Strandherd uh, Armstrong Bridge. The Royal Canadian Legion's uh, cadets will be going off uh, to Vimy in November from Manatick, and both the Barhaven and the Manatick Legions commemorated this auspicious day uh, right outside of the Vimy Memorial Bridge, and I was fortunate to lay a wreath on behalf of the province of Ontario with my husband, who is former military, and my daughter, whose father and grandfather both served in the Canadian Forces and whose great-grandfather served World War II and great-great-grandfather served at Vimy. But one young lady from my constituency actually got to go to Vimy last week, and her name is Adriana Winchester, and she goes to the aptly named school, John McRae Secondary School, and she sang there with the Ottawa Children's Choir. And I want to let Adriana know, and her among the 10,000 young people who went to Vimy uh, this past Sunday, that we appreciate them acknowledging such an important day in Canadian history, and we appreciate the fact that they are carrying on the torch uh, that we lost so long ago. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Well, thank you, Sp Speaker. Just yesterday, I was in the town of Gore Bay on Manitoulin Island visiting C.C. McLean Public School. The school is one of 10 schools out of 700 applicants that recently won $25,000 in new technology from Staples Canada as part of an annual contest that integrates a special project in support of the environment. Speaker, when I walked into Mrs. Jeffkin's grade four and five class, the students were all smiling. This class is raising Chinook salmon for release into the North Channel of Lake Huron. Not only does this project have the support of the school, but also of the entire community of Gore Bay. I want everyone in this house to subscribe to their YouTube channel and website so we can all follow the journey of these salmons together. This school not only has this creative project that supports the local fishery, they also created a recycling program and a school garden. Speaker, the work that is being done in this school is teaching a whole generation of future environmental leaders. I want to quickly thank teacher Heather Jeffkins and all her students, Principal Tracy Chapman, Mayors Ron Lane and Ozzie Hunt, Ron Garlis Garlinski from Staples Canada, and Ian Anderson from the Gore Bay and Game Fishing Club for their support and hard work on this project. As we cheered yesterday, Mr. Speaker, go Colts, go Green. Congratulations. <laughs> The member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As a Polish Canadian, I'm honoured to rise in the Legislature today to commemorate the 77th anniversary of the Katyn massacre and the 7th anniversary of the Smolensk air disaster. For the people of Poland, Katyn is an example of the criminal acts of the Soviet system against the Polish nation. In April and May of 1940, more than 20,000 Polish nationals were murdered. This decimated the ranks of the Polish military, ruling class, and intelligentsia. Mr. Speaker, this tragic event has personal meaning to me. Every year, I remember my two great uncles who were murdered in Katyn, and also my colleague, from the, the member from Kingston and the Islands. She also had a great uncle who was slaughtered there. Their losses remind me of the horrors of war and the high price of freedom and defence against subjugation. Remembering acts like this should strengthen Canadians' resolve against all forms of hatred and reinforce our commitment to respect and peace. And I'd like to take this opportunity to also remember the 96 people, including Polish President Lech Kaczynski, his wife, and high-ranking officials who were lost in the Smolensk air disaster in 2010. 
This disaster happened as the president and government officials were en route to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Katyn massacre. Their plane crashed near the airport runway in Smolensk. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, this past Sunday, Premier Wynne, MPP Baker and I marched with Poland's Consul General Grzegorz Morawski and dozens of members of Toronto's Polish community from St. Casimir's Church to the Katyn Monument in Parkdale High Park. This was a very important event for the Polish community that demonstrated that both the Katyn massacre and Smolensk air disasters are two tragedies that will never be forgotten. Thank you. The member of Sandwich, the member from Halliburton, Court of Ice Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Canadian Hearing Society provides important services to culturally deaf, oral deaf, deafened, or hard of hearing persons and advocates for over 36,000 clients across Ontario. In the past, I have worked with the board of directors of the Canadian Hearing Society in Ontario and know how much Ontarians rely on the services that they deliver. That is why it saddens me to see the ongoing labour dispute that is negatively affecting these individuals. I, it has been five weeks since workers at the Canadian Hearing Society, many of them deaf or disabled themselves, were forced off the job, and there doesn't seem to be an end in sight. Let me tell you how this situation is affecting people. Deaf individuals are without qualified interpreters and are losing employment opportunities, as well as access to meetings important to their health, finances, and every other aspect of their lives. Unemployed individuals are without specialized employment professionals to advocate for them, which compounds the disadvantages they already face when seeking employment. Seniors that cannot hear are literally shut in their homes in isolation while also dealing with chronic health issues. When we have a, a father who is deaf and has stage four cancer, he's been without interpreting services in hospitals for weeks. The son has had to take time off work to interpret for his father during oncologist meetings, trying to interpret complex medical issues that he is not qualified to do. And it's unfortunate he's forced in this situation. I would like the opportunity to call on the government to do what they can to end this dispute as soon as possible and focus on the importance of these services to Ontarians who have been denied. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Speaker, the month of April is Parkinson Awareness Month. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease. It affects movement. Movement is normally controlled by dopamine, a chemical that carries signals between the nerves in the brain. When cells that normally produce dopamine die, the symptoms of Parkinson's appear. Parkinson's disease affects more than movement, impairing speech, mood, eating and drinking, sleep, and cognitive changes. There is no known cause or cure for Parkinson's disease. Today, an estimated 40,000 Ontarians live with Parkinson's disease. As Ontario's population ages, the number of people with Parkinson's will grow as will cases of dementia and clinical depression in people with Parkinson's. Many Parkinson's drugs temporarily replenish dopamine or mimic the action of dopamine. These medications generally help reduce muscle rigidity, improve speed and coordination of movement, and lessen tremor. Coping with Parkinson's disease also involves good nutrition, active living, being safe at home and making some simple changes at mealtime, among other options that a Parkinson's patient and his or her doctor and specialists will discuss. In Ontario, Parkinson Canada offers 100 support groups and serves more than 8,000 families each year. Across Canada, Parkinson Canada helps ensure that no one faces Parkinson's alone. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Simcoe York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my pleasure today to rise to congratulate my constituent and longtime community advocate, Annabelle Slate, on her appointment to the Order of Canada. I am thrilled to recognize this achievement in 2017, both marking Canada's 150th anniversary and the 50th anniversary of the Order of Canada. The Order of Canada is one of our country's highest civilian honours, recognizing outstanding achievement, dedication to the community, and service to the nation. Her citation reads as follows, for nurturing a passion for science and nature among generations of Canadian children. I have known Annabelle for a number of years. She is without doubt a strong activist who gets things done. 
She co-founded the Ladies of the Lake Environmental Group, and while the group is open to men, she notes that women have a different way of doing things. The Latin motto for the Order of Canada means they desire a better country. This rings true for Annabelle. She has a clear commitment to our com community and local environment, but also to the broader Lake Simcoe watershed. It is fitting to celebrate her achievement in the legislature in April, the same month that we celebrate Earth Day. I uh, thank all members, and I want to take just a short, very moment to seek your, uh, uh, to provide you with a gentle reminder that we do have word counts uh, on the number of minutes that are allowed to speak. Uh, sometimes they're being stretched. My, I hate. I really do hate interrupting you if you're doing a good news story or dedicating a, a statement to a lost friend. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to, once again, to all caucuses, spread it out that a minute 30 is what has been allotted for the statements. And I appreciate you staying inside of that time frame. I appreciate it very much. Therefore, it is now